Hi. <clears throat> good morning. It's good to be back in Waimea. I spent uh, four months here a little over a year and a half ago. So it's good to come back. And so I was here working with Mark and Melly and uh, show you a little later some of the stuff we were working on. But uh, yeah, it's greener this time back. We've had more rain. And uh, so I left in December a year ago. So it was pretty dry then. And <clears throat> but uh, I'm enjoying my time. So part of my responsibilities at Utah State, I, I teach commodity marketing. I do research and I do extension. And a lot of the extension work I do is talking with uh, producers about markets and especially the cattle industry is most of my expertise. I do some on alfalfa in, in the Utah area, but uh, talking about cattle is what I like to do. So uh, when I give Outlook, I like to not just tell you whether prices will be higher or lower over the next time frame, but kind of lay out the facts that uh, different uh, different factors that impact the market and see what's going on. So when I teach students, I always say that supply and demand determine price. But when I talk to producers, we don't talk about supply or demand in some uh, hypothetical. We actually look at the things that drive the supply. So the first thing we'll look at is kind of the, the cow herd our basic factory for putting out calves and ultimately beef. And we'll see what the numbers say on that. So uh, almost all of my data is from USDA, uh, most of it National Ag Statistics Service, some from the Ag Marketing Service, uh, but it's almost all uh, USDA data. And I work with a group called the Livestock Market Information Center. And a lot of these slides are developed by them. So you can see the heifers that were held for replacements have been declining for the last several years and we're down again in almost 6% uh, during 2022. So this is from the January 1 inventory numbers. So we're not putting heifers, we're not holding heifers back, uh, certainly not building the herd. Some of this back in here uh, was does this have a pointer? Oh, yeah. Okay. So some of this back in here was probably economically driven, but the last couple of years, this has primarily been drought driven, uh, especially this past year in the uh, Southwest and, and kind of the Midwest, big cow calf producing states, they've been very dry. And so that's part of what was driving uh, not keeping it. Not only were we not keeping heifers, but we were slaughtering more beef cows. So this is the beef cow slaughter, which was well above the prior year and much above uh, the five year average. And so the, the cow herd had actually been declining uh, for two or three years. And even though it was smaller cow herd, we we're still killing more, more cows. So most of this again is drought pressure. Uh, people just didn't have the resources. And so we're calling the herds. I'll show you a slide that shows these numbers state by state, and you can see the uh, Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Nebraska, some of the big cow-calf states were the ones that were uh, losing the, the most numbers. And then on top of that, obviously if we're not keeping heifers back, then we must be sending those to the feedlots, and so predictably heifer slaughter was running above a uh, year ago slaughter. So kind of two things are going on this past year. The size of the cow herd is decreasing, but the size of the beef supply being front, put in front of consumers is increasing because we're killing more heifers, we're killing more cows uh, in the mix. So I'll highlight both of those. So this is the total January 1 cattle inventory and it was down in 2023. The projections are that it'll continue 
lower for at least another year or two before it starts to turn up and then depending upon whether we are done with drought for a few years or that continues it might turn quicker I mean the economics are there to turn it around uh, but if the drought persists then we won't turn it so that's kind of what the green and blue bars are indicating in terms of beef cow numbers the herd was down 3.6 percent this past year uh, relative to the prior year and you can see that that's been uh, we've been now about four years uh, declining and we're back uh, to about as low as we've been uh, in the last 20 or 30 years and if you go back uh, even further the herd peaked back in the late 1970s the cow herd and so we've kind of continued to decrease cow numbers but I don't have a slide that shows it but interestingly even with this uh, decrease we actually set a record for beef production this past year and part of that was because we were killing all the cows and extra heifers but part of it is we've continued over this time to get larger and larger cows larger cows lead to heavier steers and so the average carcass weight of our steers and heifers has increased and our production efficiency our wean calves all those things have increased and so even though the herd has been gradually declining the amount of beef produced has been staying steady or increasing so here's a couple of those uh, I'll show you two slides on state numbers so you can see uh, kind of up through this area this is the dominant uh, cow calf country uh, it's also the dominant feedlot country it's just have lots of resources and Hawaii's in here uh, January 1 number at 82,000 uh, head of cattle so drought wise I should have I should put a drought monitor in here from last year but this was heavy uh, drought area in through here during this past year and there's the decrease in herd numbers uh, beef cow numbers in those areas so Texas down 125,000 Oklahoma 140 Kansas 106 so those are significant drops in in cattle numbers Nebraska almost a hundred thousand uh, so you can see that just those four states which happen to be four of the top five cattle producing states and we took out one two three four almost five hundred thousand head of cattle uh, right there I showed this slide in Maui and they had a hard time believing this the USDA said Hawaii was up 3,000 head I don't think that's the case I don't know what you guys think but uh, you know it comes back to nobody goes out and physically counts cattle USDA sends out surveys producers fill out those surveys and we rely on that information and if somebody didn't fill one out the year before or the, and then filled one out you know those things can influence it but anyway uh, even if Hawaii's numbers are up 3,000 I don't think that'll have any significant downward impact on calf prices because 85 percent of those calves get shipped here and you can see uh, you know even on the west coast we're down uh, 16,000 on the three west coast states and certainly uh, overall herd numbers being lower I think Hawaii will participate in what I'll eventually show is uh, much higher calf prices so the calf crop uh, obviously if we're killing more cows we're not holding back replacement heifers uh, the calf crop for 2022 was down 2% uh, 34 and a half million head and we'll expect it to be lower again uh, in 2023 so this year's calf crop should be lower as well and likely just by the nature of how long it takes to start holding replacement heifers getting them bred 
the 2020 forecast crop will probably also be below this number. So really we're looking at uh, at least a couple of years of uh, very tight calf supplies which should be uh, positive in terms of price that you're likely to receive for your calves. Cattle on feed numbers for the first part of the of last year, so this is 2022 now, here's 2023, cattle on feed for the first uh, two-thirds of the year was above the five-year average. Part of that was the increased uh, heifer slaughter that was occurring by kind of the end of the of the year 2022 we were starting to run out of calves to put in the feedlot and that's what's occurring here there simply isn't enough calves yearlings stock or cattle out there to uh, fill up the feedlot so feedlots are going to be uh, scrambling over the next couple of years to try to uh, keep their their feedlots full and I've often said the, the feedlot industry is very similar to tourism hotel industry. Feedlots make money by keeping bunks full, just like hotels make money by keeping beds full and feeding you overpriced food. Feedlots charge you a yardage fee and feed you overpriced feed, and that's how they make money. So when feedlots have to compete to fill up their space. They don't, you know, they don't like to lay off people. They've got investments in their feed mills, and so they've got this big capital investment. The way to pay that off is to keep running cattle. So they're going to be very competitive over the next couple of years, again, trying to bid for cattle to put into the feedlot. So the cow-calf guy, and this is typical occurrence as the cycle of the cattle cycle fluctuates different parties tend to make more money at different times and we're entering the phase for the next couple of years where the cow calf will really be the driver and if you are retaining ownership and feeding through a feedlot there probably will still be some money in that because the packing industry will be short of cattle too but feedlot margins will definitely be tighter this year than what they have been the last couple of years uh, because they'll be spending more to to get calves <clears throat> so in terms of the beef that was put in front of consumers even though we were in the process this past year 2022 is the dark bar we were in the process of liquidating cows, killing off heifers so the cow herd was shrinking, we were actually putting more beef in front of the consumer because we had uh, the increased uh, cow slaughter, the increased heifer slaughter. So these were record levels of, of beef production, much above the prior five-year average. But you can see now the light blue uh, for 2023 and then the brown for 2024 the expected uh, production uh, total beef in front of consumers for the next couple of years will be uh, down uh, for the most part will be, be below the five-year average and then this expectation here why that's even dropping off further in 2024 we're expecting there'll be enough profit made uh, this year that cow calf producers will start holding heifers back trying to rebuild the herds especially if the if the drought uh, ends uh, and then as we start rebuilding the herd then there's less heifers being killed less cows being killed and so the initial thing of trying to rebuild actually even puts fewer pounds of beef in front of consumers so this will be uh, the story going forward for the next couple of years and again this is probably why uh, feedlots will probably still make a little money they'll have tighter margins but the retailers will be scrambling to find enough beef uh, to satisfy consumer demand we'll talk about demand here next and there is some concern there but on the supply side everything's basically very positive in terms of our short 
cow numbers uh, will continue for the next couple of years, smaller calf crop uh, next couple of years, and there'll be fewer cattle to put on feed. So all of those things will support higher calf, stalker, and, and yearling cattle prices. Beef demand is always harder to measure and talk about than supply. Supply, we, you know, we can track uh, cattle numbers, we can track cattle on feed, those kind of things. Beef demand is a little more difficult. Uh, these aren't uh, Hawaii retail prices, but they're just reflective of uh, higher prices uh, for different beef cuts. Beef is typically the high-priced protein leader in terms of uh, most cuts of beef are priced above most pork and poultry cuts. The good news for the beef industry is the avian influenza that's hit the poultry industry hard has reduced the poultry supply and driven up poultry prices. Not only are you paying a lot more for eggs, but you're paying more for chicken. And so if boneless, skinless chicken breasts are 10 bucks a pound, well, that supports uh, steaks at 12, 15, 17 dollars a pound. If they're selling these uh, boneless, skinless chicken breasts at four or five dollars a pound, then consumers start having a hard time paying three times more for a steak per pound than, than chicken. And so, uh, you know, it's one of those things, uh, economics of agriculture, sometimes uh, somebody else's woe is somebody else's gain. And in this case, the chicken industry, poultry industry typically expands production every year relative to the prior year. But this past year, again, because of the avian influenza, the number of birds that they had to uh, kill uh, has reduced their supply. And the pork industry also uh, didn't expand uh, this past year, and so pork prices are pretty high. So the relative meat prices are such that, that will, uh, that's positive for beef demand. The two big unknowns out there, uh, recession, inflation, uh, those tie together. I'm not a uh, macroeconomist per se. I don't deal with, I don't know anything more about whether we're going to have a recession, what inflation really is. Uh, and this is fairly political sometimes, even how they go about measuring it, certainly how they go about reporting it. But anytime there is talk of these things, consumer confidence gets, uh, we start worrying. And, and when we have risk and we're wondering if I'm going to be laid off or I'm wondering is my paycheck going to go up as much as what I'm seeing prices in the grocery store or prices at the gas pump go up. When you have those thoughts, then you start saying, eh, maybe I'm not buying steak tonight. Maybe I am buying either hamburger or I'm going with a lower priced product. So these issues can, can and do uh, impact uh, beef prices and kind of how what happens with this going forward in, in this year. Um, I don't think it will be enough to derail higher calf prices, but it could make it uh, more difficult on feedlots if there are periods when uh, retail prices uh, get ratcheted back uh, because of consumer fears. So this past year actually, uh, basically retail beef prices held pretty constant. So the inflation, the upward price actually was in 2021. And then 2022, even though we were seeing more inflation in general in the economy during this year, uh, beef prices pretty much just held constant. And that's actually a good thing. Consumers 
Well, obviously consumers would like lower prices, but stable prices are better for consumers than uh, volatile prices. So this, uh, this probably helped uh, beef demand a little bit. So I've got a couple colleagues at Kansas State University that come up with this index uh, for beef demand and they try to factor in uh, consumer attitudes, they factor in price of beef, how much beef's out there, price of pork and chicken, and come up with this index to try to say whether beef demand's increasing or decreasing. And what you can see is that for 2022, uh, they felt like demand dropped off just a little bit, but that's basically still above the pre-COVID levels, which is uh, phenomenal. I think given the concerns with uh, inflation and recession, it would not surprise me to see this drop another couple percentage points for 2023, but we're still going to be up here in positive beef demand relative to uh, back in here. So I think demand will be down a little, but not enough to concern us too much. The other thing I think that's positive for beef demand, and I kind of alluded to this already, when you look at the total meat and poultry uh, production, then every quarter this year and even into 2024 is expected to be lower than the 2022 numbers. So again, this is driven by the lower beef supply, but it's also being driven by the fact that it will be a while before poultry can rebuild and get back to their numbers. So the fact that all meat will be lower uh, this, this year, even if demand uh, for beef slips a little bit with the lower total supply of meat out there, should be able to hold retail prices again fairly constant, I think, and that it won't be uh, too much of a downer for, for the calf and fed cattle market. So summary on beef demand was a little lower for 2022 because of where consumer confidence is right now. I think the surveys that I've seen uh, show that it is much lower than it was a couple years ago. Uh, again, just because people tend to grab on to their wallet and hang on uh, during inflation recessionary times. So it's likely going to be down a little, but not too much. The other thing that can impact uh, cattle prices at all levels and certainly beef prices is our trade. Uh, we export over 10% of our beef. Our four major markets, Japan, South Korea, Mexico and Canada, those are all pretty stable economies. Uh, we have pretty stable trade relationships with them. And so going forward, there would be nothing to think that, that any one of these partners would suddenly stop uh, buying our beef. China in the last two years has actually overtaken Mexico and Canada. China is now our third largest beef export market. And uh, they're somewhat, China is somewhat uh, switching from exporting, importing beef, uh, importing pork to, to more beef. So we're sending about the to same total tonnage of beef and pork, but we're sending more beef and less pork. The one concern well, I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. We'll, we'll come back there. Our total beef and veal exports for this past year, here's the 2022 line, uh, set a record in terms of tonnage. So you can see we've been increasing uh, those markets uh, fairly steadily. And if you look out here the next two years, it's expected to decline. That's not because we think our trading partners don't want our product uh, or that there's any change politically. That's not what's driving that. It's just a factor of 
when you look at our total beef supply, those numbers that I showed, we won't have the supply available to export that much. And actually our export, our export markets, they'll be competing with our domestic consumers uh, for this amount of product. And so the export market could help to maintain higher retail beef prices as the export markets will continue to try and, and get that, uh, that product as well. But we just won't have the, the product. On the import side, uh, 2022 was also up relative to the two prior years. And this was starting to basically, we, uh, you know, I'm amazed when I drive around whether it's my local town of Logan, Utah or wherever, it doesn't matter what time of day, uh, restaurants are full, fast food is full, people are still, uh, they're consuming product. And if we don't have enough hamburger in this country to satisfy that appetite, then we import it. Uh, so we're probably importing more uh, Australian, New Zealand beef, Argentine beef, most of the, if it's coming in as product, that's where it's coming from. If it's walking across the border or coming across in trucks from, from Mexico or Canada, uh, Canada, some of it comes across as finished animals, some as feeders and, and gets fed in our feedlots. Same Mexico, most of it comes across as lighter weight calves. Um, but that's basically, we're looking at increased imports over the next couple of years. And the reason being is we're going to try to put enough supply in front of consumers. And to get that supply, we'll have to be importing it because our own herd will be shrinking. So these are not, these trade relationships aren't flipping because of of trade deals or trade negotiations, they're just a fact that our beef supply will be down, so we'll export less and we'll import more to try to put the product in front of the consumer. So we'll probably go back. Uh, you can see for the last several years, we've been near zero on total tonnage of cattle or beef coming in versus going out. Uh, we'll actually be importing more in the next couple of years, uh, getting back to levels that we were uh, in the early 2000s, uh, but not, you know, we'll still be below, uh, for the most part, below those levels of 2005 through 2007, but we'll import a little more. Here's just a graph of our major markets. So again, you can see Japan and South Korea uh, for the last, uh, three or four years have been pretty stable in that, uh, I mean, that relative, if you look at the whole picture, I mean, it varies by month, but we're basically in 60, 65 million pounds uh, per month. And then the uh, Canada and Mexico markets are down in here in the 25 uh, to 30 million pounds per month. I'll show you the next slide, it's on a different scale but basically China is now going to be up in this area here. So you can see the five year average, we were shipping almost no beef into China. The only beef was basically into uh, Hong Kong and a little bit getting trans shipped through Vietnam into, into China. But then we started kind of in 2020. Uh, 2020, the latter part of 2020, and then 2021, we grew it a bunch. 2022 was a good year. It did kind of fall off the last three months. I've been trying to read to find out if this is a concern, if it's dropping back, if politically anything's changed. And this is always a challenge with China. China is a fabulous market just because the size of the market. You only have to get individual Chinese to consume a couple pounds of beef, but there's so many of them, that's a huge impact. 
but always the difficulty with China is the kind of the political side of things and China always takes care of China in all their relationships and so if for whatever reason whether it's politically whether they've determined they want to support their own pork industry and they're building that back up uh, and so they want less beef or pork from us they'll do what they want to do so you always get a little hesitant if you see uh, if China's your top market, then you've always got risk. The fact that China's still only our third lowest player and the fact that our exports are expected to be lower, even if they drop back down uh, into this level, I don't think that will have a negative impact on our overall trade uh, this next year because we'll just be short of product to export anyway. So trade summary, uh, basically, our exports were up in 2022. We also increased imports. China is now our third largest market. Going to be lower in 2023, but that's not because our trading partners don't want us. We just don't have the supply. So I think the fact that most of those trading partners will want our product, that will still be price positive for cattle and calf prices. So what does that mean for prices? This is, so I, just the nature of my job, I usually get asked to do market forecasts in January and February, just as my extension work. And so this is a slide from a year ago, January 2022. This is what the Chicago Mercantile Exchange feeder cattle futures prices were. So that's basically prices for uh, an average 700 750 pound steer. Uh, so this was in January. This is what the market was forecasting prices would be throughout the year. And this was the actuals for 2022, what those monthly averages were. You can see the first part of the year, we were a little below the expectations uh, through the spring. But by the time we got into summer and fall, we were actually uh, fairly close to the expectations uh, in terms of, of where prices ended up this past fall. So here is a similar slide for January 23, what the market expectations are for prices. And what you notice is the expectations here for this year relative to last year are all up 20 to almost $30. And what this last column shows, I put this slide together in January, but between January and March, uh, these markets have all come up even higher to where now these prices are around 220, 221. Uh, these are in the 215 range. So in total, relative to a year ago, we're now expecting prices uh, for most of the year to be somewhere 30 to 40 dollars higher than a year ago per hundred weight so that you know on a 400 450 pound calf that's another what is that 160 170 dollars per calf that you would expect uh relative to a year ago prices don't know if anybody has sold any calves recently uh you know this would say if you're selling calves right now, you'd probably be $30, $35 higher than what you were selling the same calves in March a year ago. Anybody sold any calves recently? So that's, I mean, these prices here, these aren't what you're getting in Hawaii, but I think these relative increases, I think will hold uh, pretty good. So for Hawaii, uh, basically, looking at those prices, and, and I'll get into this a little more in my next presentation of trying to, of showing you where I come up with, with these prices. But basically, if you subtract off your shipping costs per head 
from West Coast prices, you'll kind of get up here and and basically if you're selling in smaller lots where your buyer is uh, trying to collect those and he may have some expenses and putting a pen together, you'll get less uh, dollars than if you've got the bigger lots where you can fill a container yourself. Uh, maybe you've got some of those relationships, but that would kind of be ballpark numbers are where I would say prices should be for this year. What could change that is if, if fuel prices again took another jump so that it impacted transportation, that could drive those a little lower. Uh, Market-wise though, I think, you know, it's looking like the expectations are calf prices are going to be higher and I think that'll be good for for Hawaii as well. So this is this is a overall estimate of cow calf profitability. It doesn't reflect any one area. It's kind of a maybe a national or um, it might be kind of influenced by Southern Plains, Oklahoma, Kansas area, but they are even with the higher feed costs, higher corn, higher hay prices, they projected that 2022 was more profitable, uh, was profitable about $50 per head, and then they're projecting 2023 will be up 125, and by 2024 they're even expecting higher calf prices and thinking we could be up in the 200 plus dollars per head profit. Again, where that, how that impacts you guys, uh, you're not as influenced directly, your costs aren't as influenced by alfalfa uh, costs or corn costs because most of you are on grass and that's more of a fixed cost. So you may swing a little higher. Your prices are still impacted by those things because that impacts mainland prices. But certainly, again, I think the direction, maybe the magnitude will be a little different, but the direction of profitability for the next two or three years should be pretty positive for the industry. So I think that's my last slide. Mahalo and thank you again for watching. I hope the information shared in this video will be useful for your production system. Please take a minute to fill out our feedback or evaluation form by scanning the QR code on your screen or clicking the link in the description box below. Your responses are anonymous and will be used to provide valuable information to our program sponsors and to help support future programs for our Hawaii ranchers and agricultural communities. And then join us August 31st, 2023 for our live Q a session where you can speak and ask questions to any of our speakers mahalo and thank you again for watching <laughs>